Greetings, this is Lisa Schimmeld. The date is January 9th, 2036. It's been three years since the aliens took up orbit around our planet. And obviously life will never be the same. I'm part of a small band of survivors. We've been living underground in secret locations for the last two years. Truth is, is if you're watching this video, it's too late, we've already lost the battle. Welcome back students, this is Professor Schimmel and I'd like to do a very brief overview of eukaryotic cells. And I think what I'm gonna do as far as images are concerned is I will drop some slides in at the end of this video. That would just be for people that are not actually attending my class. Uh, but are watching these um, on YouTube. Uh, my students should have all of the illustrations that I'm going to be referring to in the outline that you downloaded and printed from Blackboard. Okay, uh, first of all, let's make some general remarks. I've already spoken to you about prokaryotic cells, otherwise known as the bacteria, and the word prokaryotic means pre-nucleus. This is a, a, a reference, of course, to the fact that prokaryotic cells lack a nuclear envelope and other organelles, which we can define as membrane-bound structures with a uh, specialized function. Um, now, all other organisms are made up of one or more eukaryotic cells, and some examples would include the protozoans, the fungi, plants, animals. Uh, those would just be um, the major examples and a lot of um, subcategories underneath those major headings. All right, now um, eukaryotic cells have DNA that's separated from the rest of the cell by means of a structure referred to as a nuclear envelope. Uh, and um, in general, eukaryotic cells are going to be larger and more complex than the prokaryotic cells. Some eukaryotic cells, such as uh, the fungi and the plants, in addition to having a cell membrane uh, or a cytoplasmic membrane surrounding the cell, separating it from the rest of the environment, they will, in addition to that structure, have a cell wall. And I'll address that in a little bit more detail later on here. All right, so let's see. Plants, algae, fungi, they have cell walls. The protozoans lack a cell wall, but rather they have a, um, a sort of a flexible structure surrounding the cell called a pellicle. Animal cells lack cell walls. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the cytoplasmic membrane, also called the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. Prokaryotic cells have this structure as, uh, as well, and it's uh, a barrier separating from the contents of the cell from its environment. And the uh, cytoplasmic membrane is a, uh, a rather complex structure. It's made up of um, uh, primarily lipids and some proteins uh, and a category of um, molecules called phospholipids. And it um, uh, is a double-layered structure, sometimes referred to as a, um, a phospholipid bilayer. And if you take a look at the diagram that I provided for you, you can, uh, you can see uh, how the uh, two layers are organized to uh, keep, uh, like I said, the environment out and the contents of the cell in. Now, uh, we've got to, in some situations, uh, move substances across the cell membrane, either into the cell, nutrients, water, etc., um, or to um, uh, remove products from the cell, uh, such as waste products and, and sometimes cellular products like hormones, for example, uh, may need to be exported from the cell. Uh, pinocytosis, uh, I don't even know if technically they still refer to it this anymore, uh, as this anymore, but sometimes it's called cell drinking, and it involves bringing small quantities of water into the, uh, into the cytoplasm of the cell. Phagocytosis is a process uh, that some cells are able to utilize, such as 
protozoans called the amoebas. In this case, what they do is, is they extend um, like fingers of their cytoplasm, surround uh, a food particle, for example, draw it into their cytoplasm. Uh, this um, vacuole, resulting vacuole, will fuse with what we call a digestive vacuole that will contain digestive enzymes and the, um, the food material will be digested at that point. All right, let's go ahead and remember I said this is a really brief survey uh, of eukaryotic cells, and let's talk briefly about the cytoplasm. We've talked about a little bit in the uh, section on prokaryotic cells, mostly made of water, perhaps 80% uh, or so of the cytoplasm is water. And we're going to find a variety of um, particles um, in the cytoplasm. I'll address those again in a moment. Sometimes the cytoplasm is referred to as being semi-fluid, which means it's uh, uh, in a state that's somewhere between liquid and solid, kind of a gelatinous. And in the eukaryotic cell, we're going to find um, um, ribosomes and also organelles. And I'm going to address uh, each of the uh, organelles uh, as I move through this lecture. What else do I want to tell you? Oh, uh, yes, uh, proteins will be synthesized uh, largely in the cytoplasm. Uh, many metabolic reactions will occur in the cytoplasm. They occur in other, uh, other sites as well, such as in the mitochondria. And let's go ahead and talk quickly about the organelles that we would find in eukaryotic cells. All right, first of all would be the nucleus, and that's going to be um, the organelle that contains, at least when the cell is not undergoing cellular division, uh, that's where we're going to find the DNA, the uh, deoxyribonucleic acid, uh, depending on the state of the cell, whether it is uh, working on uh, cell division or not. We may find the DNA in a uh, loose, uncoiled form called chromatin, or, and then as the cell prepares itself to divide by mitosis or meiosis, that chromatin is going to coil and condense and wrap around a core of what are known as histone proteins into those characteristic um, chromosomes, um, and I'll show you a diagram of those uh, later in this video. I'll, I'll tack it into the end. Uh, all right, now um, some other information about the nucleus. It's often the largest structure within the eukaryotic cells. Uh, most of the genetic information in the cell will be found in the nucleus. There are small quantities of DNA located in mitochondria and in plant cells and chloroplasts as well. Uh, when, um, and I've already mentioned when the eukaryotic cell is not dividing, the DNA will be um, in a loose, uncoiled form called chromatin. All right. Uh, oh, and those histone proteins, we only find those in eukaryotic cells. They are never found. Histone proteins are not found in prokaryotic cells. Okay, let's move on to the endoplasmic reticulum, sometimes referred to just as the ER. And uh, this is a um, uh, essentially a network of canals that runs through the cytoplasm. Uh, and it um, provides a large surface area upon which many reactions can occur. Uh, for example, uh, well, I should go on to say that there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. Rough endoplasmic reticulum, or rough ER, is um, uh, covered or studded with ribosomes on its um, exterior surface, and we're going to see uh, major um, uh, protein synthesis occurring here. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum lacks those ribosomes, and we're going to see things like um, lipid synthesis, uh, de uh, detoxification of um, obviously toxic substances occurs there. And uh, the ER is going to be involved in a synthesis of um, uh, some substances and also uh, used to transport substances from one part of the cell uh, to another. And also um, in some occasions we will um, uh, store cellular products in the endoplasmic reticulum to be used at a later date. Okay, here I go, moving on to ribosomes. Now, um, ribosomes are found in both prokaryotic and in eukaryotic cells. We've already talked about this a little bit. Prokaryotic ribosomes are the um, smaller and slightly simpler variety, sometimes referred to as 70S. Their size, I mean, is referred to as 70S. Eukaryotic ribosomes are referred to as 80S, slightly larger, a little more complex than prokaryotic ribosomes. Uh, beyond that, Prokaryotic and eukaryotic ribosomes are pretty much the same. Uh, they are made of um, two smaller subunits that can uh, separate 
or join together depending on whether protein is actively being synthesized or not. Uh, and they are the site of protein synthesis. Ribosomes are made up of protein and the nucleic acid called ribonucleic acid or RNA. Okay, uh, let's see where are ribosomes found in eukaryotic cells. In addition to being attached to the outside of rough ER, they are also um, sprinkled throughout the cytoplasm. Oh, and we'll find a few in um, mitochondria and chloroplasts. Next would be the uh, Golgi complex, uh, complex or Golgi apparatus. And this is a, um, a series of four or maybe five kind of flattened sacs or discs uh, that are kind of compressed together. And what they do, what the uh, Golgi complex does is, it, is it's going to, um, uh, to modify uh, the products made by the ER and secrete them either um, to the environment surrounding the cell or to another part of the cell. Um, and uh, next would be mitochondria. You've got a, a kind of a cutaway drawing showing the inside. Uh, it's actually a, a fairly complex structure. Many um, biologists, if not all at this point, believe that mitochondria and chloroplasts um, actually evolved from a, a symbiotic relationship between bacterial cells and larger cells um, and um, evolved into um, mitochondria and, um, and then uh, also chloroplasts. But anyways, mitochondria um, typically um, referred to as the powerhouse of the cell. It is the primary site where synthesis of adenosine triphosphate or good old ATP is produced. And ATP is going to fuel many of the uh, reactions within the cell. All right, I'm just uh, powering through this. Uh, next would be centrioles, um, or uh, I should say centrosome which is made up of two structures called centrioles. And centrioles are going to be um, involved in cellular division, mitosis and meiosis, and they are going to be where uh, structures called microtubules or spindle fibers are going to originate from. And these spindle fibers are involved in uh, the, um, the movement of chromosomes into uh, the two daughter cells that result from either mitosis or meiosis. All right, let's see what else we've got. Uh, plant cells have an organelle called a chloroplast, and the chloroplast is going to contain a pigment called chlorophyll. And this pigment is involved in a process known as photosynthesis. Photosynthesis involves the reduction of a carbon dioxide molecule, which means adding hydrogen to it. The source of the hydrogen is a water molecule. Now, when carbon dioxide is reduced, we're going to produce glucose. So glucose is the product of photosynthesis and uh, photosynthetic cells, well, they're able to make their own lunch. Okay, now uh, some eukaryotic cells have flagella uh, and some of them have other shorter structures called cilia. Prokaryotic cells never have cilia, only found in eukaryotic cells. Um, all I'm going to say about these structures is, um, and there are some notable exceptions to what I'm saying here, is that um, cells with flagella definitely and with cilia maybe are modal, meaning they're capable of moving through their environment. And um, eukaryotic flagella and cilia are, I'm just going to leave it at, are structurally quite a bit more complex than prokaryotic uh, flagella. Okay, people, that wraps it up. I told you it was going to be quick. Thanks for watching.